In this video, I will take you on a journey in making a completely 3D printed RC airplane. Not only I will show you the every step of the way, but also the fails I've experienced and how to fix them. My name is Alan and I'm an engineering student here at UC Berkeley that loves to make things that flies. Way before I came to college, I've been building these multi-rotor drones all my life. While they're simple to build and extremely versatile, which I got to build really tiny ones and big human carrying ones. They have huge limitations compared to fixed ones. Low flight time, loud noise, and less safe in general. When one of my best friends gifted me a little RC glider for my birthday, that's the moment when I decided that I need to jump out of my comfort zone and start learning how to design fixed wings. Designing a fixed-wing aircraft is a lot harder than designing a multi-rotor aircraft, which could literally be four sticks and a square. We're playing and balancing with a lot of variables right here, so my journey will actually start with downloading somebody else's design and learn how they design it by making it myself. After searching through YouTube and Reddit, I landed my foot on the Model S by Eclipse and Aircraft, and after spending a couple hundred dollars buying all the materials I needed from Amazon, the printing begins. So apparently there's a special type of 3D printing filament called the active foaming filament. When you heat the material through the nozzle of the 3D printer, it volumetrically expands and fills itself with air. This allows you to print things that are really, really light. Take this piece for example, made out of normal PLA and one with bamboo PLA arrow. The PLA arrow one is nearly half the weight. As I dug more through the bamboo store, being a 3D printer veteran with over seven years of experience, and with a bit of overconfidence, I found a harder to print but allegedly stronger filament that's a good replacement for PLA Arrow. It's called the ASA Arrow. And the overconfidence quickly bit back as I began my first print with a default setting on the Benchy, which is supposed to look like this but ended up looking like this. And after reading through Bamboo Wiki, Reddit, YouTube, and going through generations of iterations, I landed on a specific setting which I fine-tuned myself to produce this model. Apparently, this aircraft was never meant to be printed with ASA Aero, but rather lightweight PLA or normal PLA. But after tuning a bunch of parameters that I never previously knew existed, I finally came to a functional setting that produced a clean-looking piece. I will link my preset in the description. And so it came with days and days of printing and printing. Due to the tendency for these filament to string and some part being printed on vase mode, I have to print all of these components one by one. Each component roughly takes 40 to 90 minutes to print. So for a whole week, I was stuck in this print something, do something productive, print something, do something productive, and print cycle. When everything was done printing, it was time to assemble. I started off with connecting two carbon fiber rods as the spar of the wings. Then each wing sections are super glued together at their edges. The control surfaces are similar, except they have this 3D printed stick that allows them to pivot. Compared to building a multi-rotor aircraft, building a fixed wing aircraft requires much more arts and craft skills, which is something I'm slightly lacking. The print defects also meant that I had to sand down a couple pieces. I wasn't able to print the wingtip properly due to its geometry with ASA arrow, so I used PLA silk instead, which I thought looked kinda cool. But turned out this filament had horrible layer adhesion, so I ended up swapping it with ABS, and that's why the wingtip color looks slightly different. Due to my imperfect tuning, there were some warping during the print which caused these gaps to form in between the sections. To improve rigidity, I ended up just taping them with fiber reinforced tapes. The fuselage is held together by a large carbon fiber tube and a 1mm tiny carbon fiber rod. I simply glued them together. The empennage, or the tail, is directly glued on without any reinforcement. I didn't like that design very much, so I reinforced it with tape. The next step is to install the control surface servos. I connected them to a powered receiver so I can set them to the neutral position before I started fixing them. I could also control the positions to see the limits. The servo connects to the control surfaces using a push rod, which I really like the simple and rigid design.
I simply have to repeat this process four times, and that finishes the ailerons and the flaps. The rudder raiders are connected with a super long 1mm CF rod that comes from the back cockpit area. Although the installation was a bit hard, these extra rods provided more rigidity to the overall body. And roughly after 15 hours of assembly, slow due to my inexperience, I was finally able to connect the wings together and check for each control surfaces. The last step was to install the motor. I chose a salvaged 21-22-1400 kV motor from my very first quadcopter that I built back in 2017. Yep. It was installed in the cockpit using 8 screws. And after testing the motor, we're good to go. Okay, so we're at Berkeley Marina. We're gonna go fly. It's a little bit windy. I never flew something with a V-tail. I never flew something with flaps. The wind is not in my favor right now. You can see the... You can see the wind is actually going that way, but I couldn't fly that way because it's just a bunch of hills. So I, f I have to fly in the direction of the wind, which is kind of bad for takeoff. Um, and there's a bit of people, so let's go. Oh, something fell off. As you can tell, the cockpit canopy actually fell off during its maiden flight, but I was surprised that it was still flying pretty stably after that. But it's flying. Wait, I should come for a land. I think the fuselage fell off. Stop, stop, stop flying! Oh, 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 oh! <laughs> the second flight went very smooth as I Velcro strapped the canopy. And... Touchdown. Woo! We did it! Due to a lack of foldable propeller, I snapped the propeller upon landing, so I modified the 3D printing files and made my own version of the landing gear. It turned out well, except it was a little bit too short for takeoff, so it was only useful for landing. <laughs> Prop is too large. Overall, I think the build was a success. I was genuinely amazed by how well it flies, which I had to credit Eclipsen for their amazing designs. My next step of this journey is to be able to design an aircraft like this and make it from scratch. We'll see how that goes, and stay tuned for my future videos. In the meantime, enjoy some landing attempts. Scrape the nose. <laughs> <laughs>